to those of you joining us on Skype for this press conference ahead of tomorrow's 26th edition of the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. It will take place in Staten Island. We have 40 of you on the conference. Uh, we have a format here where we're going to be meeting five athletes. Each of them uh, will have a picture taken with their race bib. That will be available to all of you free via a Dropbox, which my colleague Michelle Samet is setting up. Uh, the athletes in sequence are going to be Sydney McLaughlin at 12.15, Rye Benjamin at 12 o'clock, Donovan Brazier at 11.45, Shawnee Miller-Webo at 11.30. And first of all, it's a very warm welcome to Noah Lyles, who can remove his mask now as we get the conference underway. Mm -hmm. A quick question from me, uh, and then you'll be in the hands of Michelle Samet, who will uh, control questions from you on the raise of a hand. Uh, two questions, in fact. I've seen, I've seen the venue. It looks fantastic. One of the branding boards that jumps out at you is the Lyle Brothers Foundation. Tell us a little bit about that. And tell us also about the double that you're going for tomorrow. Uh, not a treble, a double on the track. Yeah, uh, the Lyle Brothers Foundation, or Sports Foundation, we, me, my mom, and my brother have been working on that for probably about a year now, maybe even more. Uh, we really had a passion for getting kids funding for being able to do the sport that they love. And we find that it's hard when you don't have the information. And we have a ton of information, whether it's trying to figure out what college you want to go to, how to talk to the right managers, how to talk to an agent, or even how to think about going pro. Whatever it needs to be, we wanted to be able to help and get that information out there, talking with parents on, you know, what's the difference between knowing if you're kid as the potential to even you know pursue track what you need to do to get them out there and then mental health like there's a whole bunch of stuff that we wanted to be able to help with and financial aid of course so we finally were able to put down the Lyles Brothers Sports Foundation in December and we have never been more excited of course we're kind of doing a soft launch now um, just with COVID happening and the Tokyo Olympics coming up it's kind of something that is there, but we really want to go huge with it after we're done with Tokyo. So we have more time to put into it. And the double. Yes, the double. <laughs> uh, truthfully, me and my coach were just like, hey, we're only doing one track meet indoor. We are really in a strong position. My endurance is pretty high right now. Uh, my coach has really been beating us up on the track and we've just been sprinkling in some speed here and there. I feel confident going into the race and I'm just like, you know what, let's do a 60 and a 200. You know, this is a fast track. Let's have some fun with it. You know, my coach is saying that he's treating this more like a time trial. We're just going to come out here, see what happens, where we need to improve later on. But to be honest, I'm excited. I, I want to run something fast in both as naturally. Uh, and we'll just see how it goes. Thanks, Noah. So as we said there, um, if you guys have a question, we'd like for you to ask them uh, by yourself rather than the chat. So if anybody has a question, raise your virtual hand and I'll go through you one by one um, and call upon you and then Noah can answer them. So any questions? Jonathan Galt is the first one up. <laughs> Hey, hey, Noah. Um, I guess you mentioned, you know, you're trying to have fun with this uh, double tomorrow, but like in terms of, is there something you can learn and take this forward to like other meets where you're sort of, you've got a prelim and a final or something like that? Like, is there a learning experience that you'll get from having these, these two races fairly close together as well tomorrow? I mean, having them close together, of course, makes you keep your endurance up. It definitely simulates a little bit of how the 100 will be at trials and at the Olympics. So being able to bounce back from both is a plus. Um, we weren't going to do that, but it helps. Can I just ask everyone to mute your yourself while there are answers because otherwise there's a echo. Okay, so the next hand up is from Larry Eder. Larry. Hey, Noah, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, so uh, the 60 and the 200, uh, what do you 
what would you like to show the the track world with your your double tomorrow? To be honest, uh, we have been working really hard on my acceleration. We've kind of been thinking a little bit different into that 10 through 30 meters in our race plan. And we kind of want to see if it's working. <laughs> That's really how it's been going uh, in terms of the 60 and the 200. My coach just said, you know, let's try and just run a fast 200 this year. Uh, we wanted some more meets to be able to do that at. It, it kind of made it more difficult with how COVID is going, especially with who has a bubble and who doesn't and how you have to get COVID tested. And as we were going more and more into the year, I was just like, okay, it's probably best to just do the fewer track meets we do, the better. Because if we leave the state, it really is kind of, you know, we're taking a risk. So when we decided that we were just going to come to Boston, well, what's now New York, we were just like, let's just do two events, get as much as we can out of this and see what happens. Any more virtual hands raised? Jonathan? Yeah, no, this is your first indoor track meet in three years. I'm curious why you guys decided um, to do it. Indoor, it, it didn't end up like that on purpose. It's kind of just how the years stack on top of each other. You know, I think the last time was 2018 and that was the last time I had a season that wasn't so stacked. So if we go into 2019, we knew that 2019 was gonna be a long year and I didn't really care so much about indoor because the outdoor season was just gonna be so long. So kind of saving myself was the purpose of that. Then 2020 popped up and I had a lot of things to do with my other sponsors, um, Adidas, Omega, Coca-Cola, Visa, Intel. They all wanted a piece of me during that indoor season. So I had to give up that indoor um, race time and focus on training and then doing a lot of things with them. And then COVID happened. So we weren't really doing anything with 2020. <laughs> and now we're in 2021. <laughs> And Larry? Noah, how, how do you feel going into a full year with the pandemic right now? Have you guys kind of figured out how to juggle around it? Um, what are you, how are you and coach dealing with it? It's definitely different and weird. Uh, each thought is how big of a risk are we taking? Uh, as I said before, with doing, we wanted to do more races this year, but again, it's a risk of, do they have a bubble? How are they handling COVID? If somebody comes in contact, how long will we be out of the track meet? You know, even if everything does go completely well, you know, we get back, when we get back on Sunday, we still have to get COVID tested and we might not get the results till two, three days later. So that's two to three days that we don't have practice. So even that throws everything off. And I was just coming to the thought of, I'd rather train through a track meet than go and have to waste a few days of practice because training is going really well. And that's kind of how our thought process has been going recently. And probably our thought for the rest of the year is as much as we can stay in the US and as much as we can stay close to home is preferably how we would like it. Um, we don't know how things are gonna go with the Olympics. Uh, as of now, they're on, so we're training for them and that's how we're proceeding. So just as a reminder, I think there was a bit of uh, confusion about virtual hands and real hands. So I see some people raising their hands because I can't see everyone. Um, I'll go to Pierre first because I can see you raise your hand. But if you, the rest of you can actually, uh, in the list of participants, raise your virtual hand, um, then I can keep track of it easier and assign the questions. But Pierre, if you want to go first um, and unmute yourself. Um... I know. I just want to know how you you imagine um, the the next uh, Olympics. How do you imagine the um, the event can be can be okay? Technically, that's not my job. <laughs> my job is just to show up and run. <laughs> uh, there are people who are paid to do that. 
to be honest, as long as we can run, I don't really care how it is. There can be no fans. There can be some fans. Uh, as long as the COVID tests are done really well, um, or if they make most people get the vaccine, something along those lines. You know, that's probably how I would see it going along. But again, that's not really my job. That's somebody else's job to take care of. But, but, but you, you, you imagine Oly Olympic Games without audience? I mean, I can see it happening. I don't know if it will happen, but you know, I can see it happening. Thank you. Right, Karen Rosen. Hey, Noah, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I've got two questions. One is, in 20 years, when somebody says, when you trained during COVID, how weird was it? What was the weirdest thing that happened while you were training? And then the other one just is, how is the music going? The weirdest thing that happened is these people kept taking all the toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know what y'all did with all that toilet paper, but I hope y'all got enough because we need it. <laughs> I really don't know what y'all thought y'all was gonna do with all this toilet paper, but it, it caused some crazy, you know, some craziness at the stores. You know, just going through and looking through all the shelves. You know, you see, you expect to see the milk gone and the water gone and you know some cereal and stuff, but toilet paper, goodness gracious. <laughs> what y'all doing with all that toilet paper? Uh the music is going well. I'm, I'm kind of on a break after I came out. With my last EP, uh, Universal Love. Uh, other than that, I've kind of just really been focusing on track. Mike Thank Henson, you. next, please. Hey, Noah, how's it going? Going well. Good, good. I just wanted to ask, I know it's a difficult thing to talk about. We spoke a bit about it uh, on BBC, about how you wanted Christian Coleman to show more responsibility when his band was suspended. I think that was before October. I just wondered if you had any more reaction to some of the details that have come out since. Not really. <laughs> it, just, it just is what it is. Rachel Bachman. Yes. Hi, Noah. I'm wondering, um, just simply, how many meets have you competed in since the pandemic began? And how many did you think you would compete in if this were a normal year? I have competed um, ooh, since the pandemic started. We had two meets in Claremont. I had a virtual meet with the Zurich Diamond League. And then I left the U.S. to go run in two meets, and, and I think that's all the track meets so far that I've had that's not including this one. Okay, so that's about five. And how many do you think you might have competed in in a normal, you know, pre-Olympic year? Oh, ooh, more than eight. <laughs> so probably around. probably around 10 to 11 meets. Definitely a lot more. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I think Andrea, you were trying to raise your hand. Um, I know, I, I only have a thumbs up and an applause for, I don't have a virtual hand, but anyway, um, my, my question just kind of goes back to uh, the Olympics and the speculation about what it's going to be like. They just released, the officials just released this playbook that says no hugging, no high fives, and all of these rules, um, no chanting, no singing for the spectators if there are spectators. What is your reaction to what might be there? I mean, so many athletes have just said, hey, we just won an Olympics no matter what. We don't care what the situation is, you know, as long as it's safe, we just want an Olympics. Where, what are your thoughts on that? I have not heard uh, about this handbook yet. <laughs> uh, just hearing from what you said about the chanting and cheering, wow, that, that kind of sucks. That would kind of make me not, it would kind of just be better if there weren't fans, if that from what you're saying is what's gonna, they're gonna continue with. Uh, that way, if you stayed home, you're, you would be able to change here. And uh, they can just probably have people send videos through social media and they would be able to post it like that. And that would be 
a lot more engaging probably instead of you know having silent audiences i've competed in a stadium where the audience was very silent and it was extremely weird i, I think i would just rather have it nobody be there <laughs> But, but regardless of what they do and, you know, like no hugging and high fives for all the athletes and everything is your feeling though, that I just want to go no matter what, I mean, this is so important. It, you know, it doesn't matter to me what the restrictions are. I definitely plan to go no matter what. And as long as they're not ridiculous, I'm you no know, planning to go. If it's definitely within reason that I can do as long as something like you get a vaccine. Yes, I can get a vaccine. If you need to travel a certain way, I will definitely travel a certain way. Um, if I need to, you know, quarantine for two weeks, I'm gonna do that. If I we're only allowed to be within company of our teams, I'll do that. You know, I'm definitely trying my best to make sure I make it to this Olympic Games. Thanks. We've just got a few more minutes left with Noah. So I'm seeing uh, Tom has his hand raised there. Um, Tom? Yeah, no, this is kind of following up on, on what Rachel was getting at, but um, having fewer chances to actually compete. I mean, what is the value to you at this point in your career of, of competing in actual races versus training? Is it important to get kind of meet reps as opposed to training reps? At the moment, we are in the indoor season and training is definitely above all right now. As we get closer and closer to June, uh, the, you know, the importance is put more on actual track meets. And my coach was even saying as we get closer, if he needs to, he'll put a track meet in Claremont every other week because we definitely have the talent in Florida to be able to get a fast enough time um, I've run 19 seconds at our Claremont tr track and I've run nine seconds at our Claremont track. You know, I don't see a problem with getting a fast enough time to qualify for the Olympics and the Olympic trials in Florida. And, you know, I believe in my coach and my agent to set up positions where I'll be able to run. And Mike Henson got his hand up. Apologies, that was an accidental hand up on my part. <laughs> um, just checking, uh, Rachel, was that also an accidental hand up or another question? Sorry, I guess that was accidental. Yeah, nothing else. <laughs> Getting through there. Uh, Jonathan Gold. Real question here. Um, so, Noah. The 200, obviously, it's tied to indoors than it is outdoors. And you're a guy who likes to run in lane seven when you're on the outdoor track. Um, what's the biggest challenge for you running the 200 indoors versus outdoors? It's definitely probably the turns. Uh, there's definitely a way to run the indoor 200. Uh, I actually do enjoy running the indoor 200 in high school. Of course, I have, have the high school uh, national record for the 200 meters and I enjoyed learning how to run the 200 indoor. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that since 2017. Uh, so I'm definitely a little rusty, but again, learning how to come off the turn, how to go into the turn, those are the make or break moments in how fast you can run a 200. So being able to keep my form, putting energy in and out of the turns, those are like the make or break moments, the excitement, the moves that you um, decide to make that can make it fast or can actually trip you up during the race. And one final question before Noah has to go from Larry Eder. So Noah, uh, one of the distances I loved watching you run indoors was the 300. Um, and I'm looking forward to the 60 and the 200, but there's a little place in my heart that's going, man, I wish he could have run a 300. Why are you so good at the 300 indoors? Truthfully, I believe I have a very strong endurance and I have speed. So when you put those two together, you know, you get a really, usually people will be like, oh, well, he'll be a great 400 runner. But if we go in between the middle of the 400 and the 200, you have 300. And that's where I believe I have the best ability 